Welcome to this Oracle Database World On Demand session. I'm Mark Scardina, Director of Product Management for the Oracle Autonomous Health Framework. Today we're going to be talking about the Oracle Autonomous Health Framework 21C new features, but not in the traditional sense. We're going to talk about how you can apply HF to your Oracle 19C deployments. But first, I want to mention about what is AHF, because it has been a journey since 12.2. To begin with, we had a whole selection of tools that you used to use reactively. They were separate, you manually activated them, and in 12.2 we started integrating them so that they would run together, they would communicate with each other, and be there running autonomously you know, would no longer need expert diagnosis. And as we've evolved into 21C, we've now evolved the tools into a full-fledged service that's predominantly enabled by default, runs autonomously in the background, provides you with built-in smart diagnosis as well as root cause analysis, and has a high level of integration into a service model. So let's look at what we're gonna talk about today. For 21C, there's a number of new features that actually are applicable to those of you running 19C databases. And so we're going to cover these today, and they fall into two categories. Some are deployable just in your normal 19C deployment. Others will require a 21C grid infrastructure with 19C databases being hosted. We'll be talking about the new separate home deployment for AHF how you can make use of a centralized grid infrastructure repository deployment, how you can get real-time performance issue detective and analysis optimized for Exadata, how you can autonomously get real rack performance monitoring with QoS management, how AHF configuration and client compliance tracking is now part of the OraCheck reports, and finally, a new centralized way to manage all those reports with AHF Collection Manager. So let's get started here and talk about this separate AHF home deployment with its auto upgrade capability. Now, many of you know that it's best practice to keep Oracle AHF up to date. However, that has always been somewhat of a problem because we don't necessarily ship with the most current version in your GI and database distributions. For example, the current AHF version is 21.2.3, available from Moss at the note referenced. However, the different AHF versions, depending upon which 19 release you are deploying or planning to deploy, varies. And it varies significantly all the way from 19 to 21.1. Now, what we've done here is create a new AHF home that's out of line with the database and GI homes so that it is very easy to upgrade the AHF install without interfering with the bits that are part of the GI home. We've even made it easier because even though you still have the AHF 180 day expiration check, we now have a new auto upgrade option, which lets AHF run a scheduled check on a frequency you specify, looking at a software location hosted by you where it can pick up the latest version at a frequency that you define. So there's a new AHF CTL set upgrade command, which allows you to specify where the new versions are going to be staged and how frequently to check for them. Now you do need to have an open SSL library present, which we generally ship, and support is limited to Linux, Solaris, and AIX. But once that's set up, you can always be assured that as you pull down the latest version of AHF, you can make it available to your clusters without any manual intervention. And notice we have a new AHF CTL command which actually is used for all the AHF lifecycle management. So in the end, the key takeaways here is that it's easier than ever to get the latest health checks and best practices deployed in your 19 environment. And this allows you to get consistent diagnostics against all your supported versions because you're using the same version of the software. It doesn't interfere with any of your GI and database deployments, whether they're upgrades or patching, because it's out of line and in a different location. And now with your local software staging area, you can get automation built into this process 
while maintaining security and quality assurance. And then finally, when you need support from Oracle Support Services, you can always get the most up-to-date diagnosis because you're running the most up-to-date AHF deployment. Now let's talk about the repository that holds a lot of this data, and that's called the Grid Infrastructure Management Repository, which was introduced in the 12 timeframe. And we've heard from you of several pros and cons associated with it. Now we know on the pro side, this is a great repository for a lot of clients, including Cluster Health Monitor, Cluster Health Advisor, QS Management, Cluster Activity Log, and the default of 72 hours of storage allows you to get through a weekend and maintain this data for diagnostic purposes. Since the database is an optimized footprint, we've minimized the actual use of production resources, and we've also incorporated built-in lifecycle management, so you don't really need to assign a DBA. And because it has HA failover support, it's always available. However, we have heard from you a number of cons, and one of which is that it does require 30 gigabytes of shared storage on your production systems. And it can also interfere with the normal GI patching and upgrade cycles because we are ending up patching the Jimmer database as a function of patching the GI. And that can be a problem for you. And finally, while we have created a centralized solution in the past, it has only been available for those customers who wanted to create a brand new cluster, an actual cluster environment called the cluster domain, and create member clusters. Virtually no customers afforded this opportunity. So what we've done is look at grid infrastructure management repository across all of our versions. And we see here that in 12.1, it was optional when we first introduced it. Then it became mandatory because of the value. But we heard a lot of pushback from a lot of customers, so we made it optional again in 19.5. So what is happening in 21.3? Well, the answer is that we have a new GMR deployment option. And that option allows for your existing clusters to make use of a centralized Jimmer service, whereby you install what we call a domain services cluster, which basically has one PDB for each of your remote clusters, but they can be existing 19C clusters or 21C clusters, and it is actually a first-class GI install option. So it's an infrastructure cluster dedicated to this purpose, and therefore it removes the local Jimmer footprint for both memory, resources, and storage. And it includes a two version backward and forward compatibility. So you don't really have to upgrade it in lockstep with your production systems. So how do I make use of that in 19? We are going to be introducing in the near future an RU that will allow you to make use of it in two ways. The first way is if you happen to already have a local Jimmer, then you can turn that one into a remote. If you install a DSC, whether a 21C or in a compatible 19C DSC as a new deployment, then you create a client data file to allow it to connect to that remote Jimmer. And then you'll simply run an MGMTCA command to move your local PDB to the DSC. And so you won't lose any data and suddenly all the clients are now talking to this remote service. The other option is for those of you who aren't using a Jimmer, you can take advantage of that without any penalty by adding Jimmer support to your 19C deployment. And so you would perform the first two steps, which is basically installing the DSC. But then instead of moving the PDB, which you wouldn't have, you actually just run a MGMTCA command, a different one, to import the client credentials into that remote cluster and the clients will automatically be restarted and connect to this remote Jimmer. So you'll get the full functionality of the AHF framework. So what we've done here in 21 is basically remove all the cons because you no longer have the shared resources that need to be there on your local production clusters. You no longer are interfering with the upgrades 
or patching of your local cluster, and you'll have a new centralized location for which to run the management repository, but still get the full functionality of all the HF clients and be able to store the data necessary for OSS support use, as well as monitoring your systems. So let's look at one such client that is making use of the grid infrastructure management repository to actually do real-time performance issue detection and how a new feature in 21 will allow you to do this for Exadata in an optimized way. And that is the 21C Cluster Health Advisor. This advisor is part of the GI, but what we have done now is create Exadata optimized models. Since we know the hardware associated with the Exadata machines, we'll automatically load these models so that we can actually detect problems before they actually occur or cause availability or performance outages. And those problems will then be alerted through EM cloud control or TFA email notifications so that you can take care of them as quickly as possible. Some of the over 50 problems we now support are on this list. These are both database problems and OS problems or node problems for your rack environment. This is a option that's specific to rack but it is there to proactively give you early warning. When we move to EM, you can actually see these alerts coming through on the cluster page as incidents, and there'll be both database alerts as well as node alerts that you can drill down on and see the details as to the nature of the alert. In this case, it's an AMSM disk problem with slow I.O., Additionally, if you aren't using EM, you can get email notifications into your operations through setting up TFA to send out SMTP email alerts, providing the same information that we would send to EM. So the bottom line here is that we now have an Exadata optimized way to proactively detect real-time Oracle Rack database problems. We also provide root cause analysis and targeted corrective actions. And that is conveniently integrated into EM's alert and management framework. So your DBAs can get the appropriate alerts and see the appropriate actions they need to take. Should you not be able to solve the problem, this data is also available through TFA in its collections so that Oracle support services can get a very good diagnostic picture of the health of your system when they're going to evaluate your SR. Another area that is autonomously enabled now in 21C and does need 21C grid infrastructure is the ability to do real-time performance monitoring on your rack systems and make use of our quality of service management functionality. Now this is a mature product, but what we've done is instead of making it a manual setup, it is now enabled in a default mode so that it can autonomously monitor in the background and give you very rich performance data in just its monitor mode without you needing to do any setup. And so you actually get the ability to get cluster-wide workload statistics that are going to be hosted in an EM dashboard and an example of that dashboard is what we have here, where I have a whole collection of workloads across my cluster, across my databases, and I get a value of my response time made up of how much time I'm using my resources and how much time I'm waiting for my resources. And if I scroll down, I further get information as to what is my response time waiting on. Where are the bottlenecks? And if we blow this up a little bit, we can see here that we break this wait time into four categories. The first is CPU wait, which actually QS can manage by manipulating resource manager. But we also figure out how much global cache wait is. So if that is the highest number, you know you probably have a workload that should be a singleton because of excessive cache misses. On the I.O. side, we also detect whether or not there's heavy I.O. and I.O. is slow, 
and that could be a disk problem or a insufficient number of disks and we'll call that out and then we have this other category which is indicated by database type weights which could be solved by looking at your AWR reports or even your CHA diagnosis to find out what the bottleneck is. The point here is you get real deep insight in real time as to where your bottlenecks are. And on top of that, we give you a historical view so that you can look at baselines and see how your performance has changed over time. All right there in Enterprise Manager. So at the end of the day, the ability to observe the actual performance like the application sees it is very valuable for your rack workloads. The ability to have it conveniently built into EM on the cluster target makes it very easy for your DBAs to use. And it allows them insight into what the root cause of any workload response time bottlenecks are so they can pass it on to the app developers. It also allows for baseline establishment. So as you review your historical performance, you can find out whether or not there's been a problem with the evolution of the app or a problem with the evolution of the database so that your performance has either not improved as expected or has deteriorated. And if necessary, this data is also supplied to Oracle Support Services in our normal diag collections so that they can get a good idea of the impact on the workloads that any defect you're reporting has. Now, AHF has proven to be an invaluable feature for many customers, but because of the number of moving parts, people have asked, can you give me something that tells me I have everything connected and configured properly? Because I don't know that. We understand that because AHF does have a lot of moving parts, even though it has a very small footprint, because there are 10 demons, there are five clusterware resources, and a collection of tools. In previous versions, not all of the components were enabled by default. In 21C, most of them are, but in the end, many of them can be still disabled or their operational mode changed. So there's value in that requirement to give you something that tells you everything is connected and running properly. So what we've done is incorporate this into the Oracle or check exit check health reports. And there's now a new section, which you can see with this arrow called autonomous health certification. And if we, we drill down on that, you can see here that we've got a range of checks organized by component to let you know whether they're configured as we suggest for best practice. Conveniently, if they don't pass by clicking on the view like you will with any other OR check report, you can get the specific instructions as to how to fix this, what's the benefit and impact of leaving it the way it is, and you're up and running very quickly with this new section. Now we found a number of customers providing us use cases for this type of compliance check. The first is provisioning gold images. By making sure that all the AHF components are configured properly and passing these checks, you can ensure your gold image meets the necessary standard. Additionally, you can track day-to-day -day operational consistency because OraCheck runs on a periodic basis and can very quickly find any diffs that would occur should somebody disable something in AHF. And then most importantly, as you move your life cycle of your software stack between maintenance, QA, production, patching, etc., you can be confident that your AHF configuration is maintained because the checks continue to pass. Now, speaking of checks, I want to close out with this final component, which is the AHF Collection Manager, which again is a centralized solution for the fact that you've got all of these exit check and or check reports. This is an Apex app that is supplied as part of the AHF download and it's there to store all your exit check and or check reports in a centralized location and manage them from there. So instead of 
keeping them on your local system and cluttering up your local system and having only the visibility of your local admins, they can be automatically upload on a schedule to this centralized repository and then managed from that point. Now by manage, what do I mean? Well, there is a home screen here, which when you log in, will show you your collection of systems that are under your responsibility. As you can see here, I have three systems that I'm managing and I'm seeing my most recent report and how it's doing relative to failures all the way to pass. And all of these Apex type widgets are active. So I can click on any one of them and drill down specifically into my failures or warnings, etc. Additionally, I can scroll down and see summaries of my most failed checks as well as my most frequent warnings and actually work at the collection level to go and fix things. So for example, if I wanna start looking at these failures, I can simply click on the pink box and I will get a list of the failures and I can then operate on them at that point. Now, how do I do that? I simply click on the RX button. For instance, this one, we're gonna fix the temporary location and up will pop a complete description of this check, its impact, and how to go about fixing it. So I can go through everything, fix them, generate another report, and very easily from within Collection Manager compare two reports to see how well I'm doing. This can also be viewed by obviously management to see how well the systems are staying in compliance. And you can see here that I've, I've done three fixes and now they all pass against successive reports. So in the end here, we have a centralized solution for all these OraCheck reports that allows me to notify DBAs to fix issues and giving them the specific guidance they need to implement the best practices. This also allows for easy establishment of baselines across my systems and to be able to compare reports after the fixes, patching, or upgrades. The beauty is that there is no license cost beyond that of the database I'm hosting in, and I can host it in an Oracle XE, SE, or EE database, whichever I choose. So in the end, there's a whole host of Oracle AHF 21C features that will benefit you from deploying them on your 19C clusters. And so for further information, please check out the grid infrastructure installation and upgrade guides, as well as the separate documentation book on the Autonomous Health Framework. You can also always get the latest version of AHF from the Moss Note referenced here. Thank you for joining us, and I hope you found this valuable.